Here we'll take a quick look at a put call parity. So very your your first sort of for a uh, the beginnings of option pricing. What does put call parity say? Put call parity says the stock price today plus the put price today, uh, the, 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 all the options in this have the same uh, strike price, uh, is equal to that strike price, the present value of that strike price uh, at the risk free rate plus the call price today. So stock price today plus the put price today is equal to the present value of the strike price plus uh, the call price. Put and call with the same strike. Now what does this mean? You know, sort of economics, or, or what have we, where have we seen this before? What this means is, note that buying a put and buying the stock is this is a protective put. Uh, so the, a protective put trading strategy is equal, equivalent to buying a, a, a bond and a call. So what this is saying is, a protective put is equal to a position uh, in where you buy the bond and buy the call. Uh, so now. Can we prove this? Uh, certainly. So, you know, a way to, to prove this uh, very uh, easily is to look at what happens if the stock price is less than the strike price, uh, and the stock price is greater than the strike. And over here, the stock price is less than the strike. Um, uh, stock price is greater than the strike. Uh, and what we're doing here, this is for in this here, we're looking at uh, the payoff from a, uh, a protective put position. And here, we're going to you know we're going to look at the payoff from our buying a bond and a call. So this is X, you know, the, um, and this would be the risk-free rate over that, that time period. Uh, I should note that um, this is the present value over the, the same period. So you could see it something like this, um, you know, if there's T periods. But in other words, this bond matures at the same time as the uh, call and, and put option. So T plus the call option. So. What does this position? Uh, what does this position pay uh, at uh, at expiration S sub t, and what does this position pay at expiration? So we can look at this by going so okay, we have the stock here and the put. If the strike, uh, the stock is less than the strike, the stock still it always pays the stock price. The put here, however, the put is going to pay the strike minus the stock. And over here, again, the stock just pays the stock, and the put pays zero. So if you look, the payoff on the, the combined position here, just add these columns, and this is going to say, so if the stock is less than the strike, it pays the strike. If the stock is greater than the strike, it pays the stock. Going over here to our, our, our bond plus call position, uh, we can say uh, on, on the bond, I just realized I, I'm using K and X, um, two different things commonly used for strike price, uh, 1 plus R to the T. So this, of course, in both, the bond pays K, the strike price, regardless of whether the stock is less than the strike or the stock is greater than the strike. So this plays K here, this plays K here. Uh, now, the call, if the stock is less than the strike, the call pays zero. Uh, and in this case, the call pays the stock minus the stock at expiration minus uh, the strike price. Payoff on the entire position, we just sum the columns, K, S sub T. So if you see, uh, both our, our, our protective put and our, our, our bond plus stock pay the exact same thing. Now this is where the you know, this is where arbitrage comes in. Um, if, they, if two things have the exact same payments in all states of the world, and here we have two states of the world, then they must have uh, the same price. Uh, the next step of this, I won't do it now, uh, is to say, well, you know, what if, what if this doesn't hold? What if, what if we have this situation? Uh, then, of course, all you do is you buy this, you sell this, and you make the difference. And you can go through this in, in a table like this and show exactly how much you'll make. Uh, but the idea of arbitrage, they both pay the same in, in all states of the world. Here we have two states. Uh, therefore, they're going to be equivalent. Now, what does this mean? What is the implication of put-call parity? One of the, the really important of implications of put-call parity is to show you what banks do. So the idea here is, of course, I can, if, if you want to put, I can, you know, I can create a put by just, by trading in a bond, a stock, a bond, call in a stock. And I, I can uh, put this portfolio, which is perfectly equivalent to a put. 
Uh, of course, I can give it a put. I can I can create a call option. So uh, the idea here is uh, what this allows us to do is, it, it, or what this shows us is, uh, if you want to put, I can construct it given a call. If you want a call, I can construct it given a put. So you come along and say, well, um, I want to I want to buy a put option from you. I, 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 as a bank, I'm happy to do it. Uh, and in the, so I sell you this put. Maybe I sell you the put for five dollars and five cents. And I go in the background and I recreate the put for five dollars. And I and I take my five cents, um, you know, for my trouble. So uh, this gives you a little bit of idea of what's going around. Would you sell a put? Of course, so long as you can you can buy a call of, a, of you know of, of that strike, uh, you're more than happy to do it. Um, good. So hopefully this gives you an idea, you know, of what what the importance of put call parity, beginning of option pricing, and what banks do in the background.